Um, let's get started, shall we? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Overthinking, Episode 7, where we take fun, interesting ideas, overanalyze them, and run them to their logical conclusions. All in the name of exploration, education, and most importantly, entertainment. I'm Luke. And I'm Devin. And we don't claim to be experts in any of the topics discussed here today. We simply find these ideas interesting as we hash them out in real time. Get ready to join us in this exciting, fun, crazy ride to nowhere. This week, we are in Julius Caesar's kitchen, preparing him a cabbage, turnip, and parsnip salad. Apparently, that was his favorite, according to Cora. Um, which yeah, we always quick Google trust. search. Yes, <laughs> quick, quick Google searches always yield us the correct um, information about historical figures. So if we get this right, we won't be killed. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, but Devin, uh, what are you drinking? No, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. Uh, no, no, not we're gonna we're gonna cut that. We're not gonna do that. We're not we're gonna, gonna do that. We're not gonna do that. No. Um, now we're gonna we're gonna use that time slot to um, call out a listener who thinks that we're wrong. So <gasps> how <yeah>. dare! <laughs> Back in episode one, I uh, right from the beginning, we're <laughs> right. I made a comment. By the way, that means we had listeners on episode one. Go us. We did actually have, we actually had quite a few listeners on episode one. Way more than I thought we would. Yeah, it was more than just me and you four times. Yep. <laughs> um, but, so I had a listener write in back from episode one and mentioned how uh, when I was talking about the separated corpus callosum, by the way, it's a corpus callosum, whatever I had said for the brain, whatever I said oh, was wrong. Oh, yeah. The actual. Okay. The piece brain. is called the corpus callosum. Okay. That wasn't his correction. No. Oh, okay. His his correction was in that I made the point the notion that like when this happens mm-hmm. and he's like so they wrote in and was like, actually most of our research done on this is all based on when the corpus callosum is separated intentionally, surgically, to prevent seizures. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So that's, oh, that's just right. A, Actually, yeah. okay. Yeah. So okay. So we were talking about the left right brain, and the right. This is this. Yeah. I'm getting the right. Okay. Yeah. We're talking about the left right brain, and then we're talking about splitting it and how different sides can experience different things and have different memories and have different and have colors. different opinions. Have different opinions. Yeah. Um. That's right. I for totally forgot that that was part of the video I watched as well. Is that it's a procedure. To prevent, mm-hmm. I guess, I, I didn't realize it was seizures. I knew it was a, a, an actual medical well, procedure. Yeah, so the seizures, other things, but, like, the the big point was, like, it's done intentionally, and we spoke about it with the guys that, like, it's not done intentionally. Oh, we and did? Like, I don't yeah, remember. So, I don't remember. Well, it was, it was, it was, it was my topic. It was my <laughs> oh, topic. Oh, it was your topic. Okay, fine. Yeah, so, I mean, they're correcting me. Um, okay. But, yeah. But, I mean, I I Our editor didn't catch that times. either. If you read the show notes for episode one, our editor didn't catch that either. Our editor, yeah, our editor didn't catch it at all because our editor totally knows all, everything that I don't has a wealth of knowledge beyond me. Our, <laughs> well, I guess um, our, our yeah, our, our editor and our writer they they yeah. are hired to be perfect. So when they mess up and they don't fix our mistakes, yes. Yeah. Uh, <sighs> by the way, I I told I just told my brother he was a. Uh, he, you, you, um, I was designing. I was uploading the newest podcast that we just up, uh, we just uploaded episode two. Um, that's how that's how far along we uh, back tri- backlog these. Um, what are you talking? Are you talking about our show? Or your yeah, our show? show. Our show. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I, right. So okay. I sent I sent I'm you right the link to that and the the image. And of course, I oh, you sent me a scam link. Yeah. You see the image though. It was be- It was one of my favorite Photoshop image of of my entire life that I've done. Uh, go ahead, look it up. For anyone listening to now, it's episode seven. If you haven't seen episode two, go to overthinkingpodcast.com. Look at episode two. I love this image. Um, it just uh, it makes me so happy. And especially it's tonight, actually a really good image. Thank, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. I like uh, that. Yeah. You put the right people in the right spots. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, but... Um, but I showed him the show notes, and I'm like, "You have to read these. These are the funniest. Even if you don't listen to the episode, the just ones read from the episode two, yeah. Were they? Uh, did you think they stacked up to episode one's show notes? I thought they were. I mean, the problem is I had the element of surprise with episode one. I wasn't expecting uh, it. That's true. 
So when I saw episode two, I was like, okay, I was like, I was expecting this. I'm like, okay, let's read this. And it was fun. Like, mm-hmm. I definitely enjoyed them very much. Um, okay. And I have some ideas. I take a lot of pride in the show notes. I, I know like, you do. I know you do. I it, told it's you a really to... fun project for me. It might be my favorite part of the podcast, to be honest. Oh, thanks. Because like, it doesn't involve I... me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it involves listening to me, I guess. Um, I don't know how that's... I, I'd rather not listen. I'd rather... Yeah, anyway. Um, but yeah, so we had that listener correction. So thank you, that listener. I don't think... He didn't give us permission to share his name, did he? Yeah, I don't have permission at this okay. time. And I'm okay. sure if I went back, I would get could get permission. But nah, I'm just going to leave it with we're good. a the listener wrote listener. in. And it is yeah. actually a real listener. We're not really... Like, I, <laughs> I realize that how, like, the more I say we're not making this up, the more it sounds like we are. Um, yeah, you're no. you're digging a hole for us. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. That's what yeah. I do. Just No one's ever going to believe that people listen to this now. Even those <laughs> listening. <laughs> We have followers on on different podcast channels, so we're good. Um, like uh, more than two. Like, yeah, yeah. It might be just me on some of them. Um, <laughs> You're like, actually, I'm on six different podcatchers. So, <laughs> actually, I was surprised because podcasting, for some reason, it's really hard to find new shows when you search mm-hmm. in the name. On Spotify, we pop right up. Like, Go I was us. really surprised. I was like, wow, I found us. We were like. Of course, we were like down the list a little bit because you know we're small, only have one episode out, yeah, uh, or two episodes out by then. Um, but yeah, we actually popped up, which was really cool. Um, yeah, quick so, side note, quick yes. quick side note. I just realized because I moved and I heard my chair squeak that I did not switch out chairs. You're, so I haven't heard it for. Oh, good. Um, listeners at home, uh, every episode I switch out my chairs because my actual desk chair squeaks, and so I, I switch it out. That. Um, episode one, I think you get a lot of it. In this episode, you you might catch it. Really? If so, I'm I'm sorry. No. Well, I didn't hear it at all in episode one. So nice. And I'm the mm-hmm. one who edits the audio, so I would actually probably care. Oh, that's our editor. <laughs> <laughs> Darn it! I blew my cover. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's great. We got, we got a correction. Thank you. Send you can always send corrections in to overthinkingpodcastshow at gmail dot com. That's what we have right now. Um, it'll change. I, hopefully we're, we're we're backlogging these so far we might get a new one um but no right now that's the email oh yeah you're right at the very minimum we have to keep it until this episode e- airs exactly well we can always yeah. just forward things i'm, I'm yeah. tech savvy that way i can forward emails um but them. without further ado we shall go to the deep dark cabinets open the lock and pull out our secrets uncovered um, I, I, oh, I got a question, Luke. Yes. Wait, wait. Um, do you have? Do you actually have a a jingle for Secrets Uncovered? Do we have a cool little? Yeah. You haven't heard it. It Are didn't you... make it into episode two. Yeah, it did. Episode two. Bet. Did it not? <laughs> did I forget to put it in? <laughs> yeah. No, no. I listened to it. I listened uh, to episode bet. two. Bet. Bet. How? Yeah. I'll pull it up right now. I'm literally, <laughs> literally listening to it. Wait. Okay. Um. Wait, here it is. Here it is. It's coming up. There it is. It's in episode two. It wasn't on the file you sent me as the final version for the show notes. All right. I, I, I don't cool. know. <laughs> it's in there. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i don't know what happened with that hopefully the, sh- the the show notes are accurate with the timestamps. they might be a few seconds off but honestly i put a lot of work into writing the timestamp. i don't put a lot of work into when the timestamp hits like i pause it to write and then look at when i pause it and then subtract a few seconds like yeah who cares <laughs> close it's enough fine. if you it's like fine. if you get there you'll hear it so it's good exactly <laughs> exactly um yeah. but it is time for a little secret uncovered and we have a lot we open so, the door again no, open no i already I, well, play the sound effect again i am proud of the sound effect i made that from scratch um, that's cool it's so, really good thank you it's not some pre-recorded thing that i just stole from the internet um because that's, that's what i would have done that's not how i roll though um but yeah so what we're gonna do for this podcast episode um is we have a lot about secrets uncovered about life and explorations that we've gotten from it and then we're going to go into actual audience questions. We have audience response, and now we have actual audience questions. Um, that so we're, we're not going to do thought experiments today. Yeah, maybe, maybe. You know, I mean, 
like you're, I'm not going to present a thought experiment, then you present one. You're right. We're going to go throw Secrets Uncovered, and, and then, then gonna... it's going to be like a listener question episode. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, and we'll we'll see how long it lasts, and we'll see. Well, I mean, we should have we we should have given ourselves a little leeway, <laughs> just in case we run out of time and we have we need to fill more time. Um, mm, I don't think we have that issue, you and I. Yeah, that's true. We're already what twenty yeah. minutes in. Um, <laughs> we haven't said anything. We haven't said anything. <laughs> Although that's what I've seen. So most of the improv um, podcasts I listen to, it's this. Like they like ignore the topic. Of the of the actual <laughs> podcast for the first like half hour, and they're like, oh, I guess we should do it. It's so, like you know whatever, um, which I mean I enjoy and also disenjoy it with, depending on who it is. But um, it, yeah, it, it totally depends on how that conversation ends up going, right? True. Like sometimes it's great, and sometimes it's like, I'm glad that you gave yourself the room to do that, but this episode sucked. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Luckily, I choose my podcast wisely. Um, yeah. But yeah. So secret uncovered. Um, Devin, do you want to go first? Sure. All right. I can do that. Whatevs. Put me on the spot like that. Yeah. I know we didn't um, discuss it, but, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I've actually been talking about the same thing all week. All right. And it's, um, so before I dig into it, I want to give the listener at home, like, a little bit of background on day in the life of being Devin. <laughs> uh, so right now, I am... I guess you could say, like, any entrepreneur has, like, shiny objects in Joan, right? Yep. And I feel like I – okay, I know for a fact I have shiny objects in Joan, but I've always felt like I was pretty good at putting the shiny objects in a closed box and leaving them alone. Um, <laughs> so secrets covered. Yes. And like, uh, like I have a list of – I literally have a, a list, a, doc, a Google Doc, that yeah. is things I won't get back to. <laughs> And that's where I put all the shiny objects. Because <laughs> yeah. as soon as I write it down and I know it's somewhere, I give my persi- I give myself mental permission to move on. Exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yep. And uh, I I used to have a physical book that was it, but then I got yeah worried about Google losing Docs. the actual book. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that being said, like I'm saying all that just to say like I have such a crazy amount of stuff on my plate for the last couple and the next couple months, mm-hmm. and when I outline everything that I'm doing, that I'm a, I'm about to outline it, like this is me ignoring 99% of what I want to do. <laughs> so okay. that's my preface. Okay. Um, so day in the life of being Devin, I wake up at 5 a.m. Mm-hmm. and then for the first hour, I'm doing like my Bible reading, my prayer, my my morning routine, my mm-hmm. like get my mental state right. Um, then I'm so that takes me until six. Then at six in the morning. I start getting ready for my day at work. I um, and for my day of work, I'm work. I'm going to school right now to become a teacher. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm student teaching right now, so my day of work is student teaching. It's going and running a classroom that some teacher is getting paid to watch me run their classroom for them. Um, <laughs> and job. I get there usually an hour before the kids get there, and then I start getting ready for and preparing things and figuring out what I missed and what I still need to make copies and things like that. Mm -hmm. Then the day starts and from eight 15 to two 45, the kids are there and I'm teaching basically. Um, after two 45 for the next half an hour, I'm contractually obligated to stay there. Um, so I usually spend the next half an hour like working and getting stuff done. Sometimes there's a student in the room that I'm work that I'm helping. Uh, Mm -hmm. Most of the time there's not, and I'm just trying to lesson plan and prepare for the rest of the week and whatnot. Uh, At 3.15, I leave, like 3.15 promptly, I leave the school and I drive to um, the dojo that I uh, instruct martial arts at. And I get there at 3.45. From 3.45, I get ready and I interact with the kids. Kids class starts at 4. I teach from 4 to 6 get out as fast as I can. I leave by 6.15, get home by 6.45, 6.45 to 7.30, shower and eat. 7.30 to 10.30, three hours of trying to do any more work that I have to for student teaching, homework and schoolwork, bed by 10.30, day repeats the next day. In that, if you like see what I just outlined, yeah. there is at no point in my general day-to-day basis where I have a break. Mm-hmm. And 
Luke, you know this because you know the things I care about. Right. There's no point in that day where I'm touching the most important projects to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? So yeah. the most the things I care about the most, they, they're not nights and weekends. They're just weekends, if weekends. Yeah. Like, and that's just, that's my routine. That's what, that's how busy I am. Mm-hmm. Um, this, this last week, um, I, early in the morning one day, messaged my girlfriend and I told her, not from a point of stress, like last, the last several weeks I've been very stressed. This week I haven't been. Right. So not from a point of stress, but I text her and I was like, and I just told her, I'm overwhelmed and I don't think it's possible to do everything that's on my plate. Um, and after I sent the text, and this is my secret uncovered, right. after I sent the text, right after I sent it, I just had the thought in my head. I was like, but I wouldn't ask for it to be different. Yep. I wouldn't ask for it to be easier. Yep. Um, it's like the old additive, and I've heard this a million times, but never like internalize it. The like idea of uh, you don't ask for it to be easier; you ask to be better. Because here's the truth, yeah. Luke. Like I'm not good enough to do everything that I need to do right now in my life, and I, I just functionally know that. That's not that's not pessimism. That's just like yeah. no, in a very practical sense. I every day I'm falling further behind with that work. Mm-hmm. Like, um, but I know for a fact there are people in the world who are capable of doing it. Mm-hmm. So I just need to become one of those people. And <laughs> you don't grow unless you push yourself. Yeah. It's, um, I have a, I have an educational psychology book next to me right now for school mm-hmm. <laughs> that has this picture in it of, have you ever seen the picture with like the, uh, your comfort zone where success happens? Yeah. Okay. This is like a more official, like psychological version of the same idea comfort zone zone of optimal growth too hard like it so it looks like a bullseye yeah. right right and if it's too hard then that's when you truly like you know a task's too hard if immediately faced with a task you you're like i can't do that and you shove it away yeah. like um if it's just experientially like at the cusp right so with students and that's what's hard about that book like it's like Supposed to, like the goal is to make your students live in the zone of optimal growth. Yeah. Um, but if you push them too hard, it's de- detrimental. If you don't push them hard enough, it's detrimental. Right. It's trying to find that balance. Yep. And that's hard to do with a class of kids when you don't know where they're at. And with a bunch of different kids. Exactly. Um, but when I apply time. it to my own life, yeah, I can give myself direct feedback. And that zone of optimal growth, too difficult. I want to live on that line. Yeah. And as soon as that line starts to feel manageable, I need to step it up. <laughs> like, that's how growth happens. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so yeah. So it's crazy hard. I'm overwhelmed. But I'm excited about that fact. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's always That's always been an interesting thing for me um, in looking at, like, where, where my comfort zone like, is where I do, I do not want to live there. I want right. to live in my safety zone, right? Which is, I want to live outside, right? Which oftentimes outside of your comfort zone, right? If you go outside your safety zone is dumb because it you won't. It, there's no potential for growth there. Um, it's only potential for hurt. Um, in the, the the idea of th- theoretical sense, I should say. Um, and your comfort zone is usually a lot smaller than your safety zone, or in a completely different spot. Like I know, and so the interesting thing. I guess it kind of no, it doesn't bleed into mine um, at all. Um, but the interesting thing for me is because I have so much experience with mental health and coaching people with that and do with my own experiences, is that oftentimes the comfort zone and the safety zone are different circles. They're completely different and they're nowhere near each other. Um, what is a safety zone? Before you get any. Further oh, okay, yeah. So it's a very. I learned about this in I think in psychology. I forget where. Um, but the idea is that you have your comfort zone of where you're happy. You're sitting here like my my zone right now is my comfort zone. I have my computer set up. I have my camera. I have my mic. Everything is the way I like it, and no one changes anything, right? But if someone were to say to move my mic onto the other side, all of a sudden I'm outside my comfort zone. I'm like, no, this isn't the way it is. This isn't the way it's best to set it up. 
but it's still in my safety zone. Like I'm not being hurt by this, right? And my my emotional, my success, my future is not my future isn't being hurt um, by having my microphone on the other side, right? Um, and so it's things like that. That's a very like simple example. Um, one example too for me is that. Um, Something like um, going out and trying to make, let's say, big sales. That's my goal for the year, right? Is my 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 psyche for the year is, you know, getting big sales, not just doing one-off little things, right? That's way outside my comfort zone. Like multi-million-dollar sales. Okay, no, <laughs> not, not that big. <laughs> I'm being realistic. Um, the funny thing is, like I think multi-dollar I'm, sales. Yeah. Well, it's the, it's the interesting thing. I think my comfort zone, it loops around. Like, if I'm doing, like, multi-million dollar sales, I'll feel much more comfortable than doing, like, $50,000 sales, you know? And at the same time, if you <laughs> dip to, like, $1,000 sales, then I'm also comfortable. Because it's a, it's a matter of extremes where it gets to a number so big, I can't comprehend it. So I'm like, sure, I'm not scared. <laughs> I, don't, I can't understand how big this number is um, on an emotional level. So it doesn't scare me emotionally. Um, you know, you need to change that. You need to actually like have a million dollars and then blow it all. And then you'll understand what a million dollars is. <laughs> okay. Watch me trying to get rid of a million dollars would be... The, like the most painful thing to watch ever because I was like, oh no, but will this get me a better? But I don't know about this. I'll spend maybe five grand. Man, no, that's too much. I'll spend a hundred dollars on these headphones. Uh, like, that would be my way of trying to spend a million dollars. You know, actually, you could probably give away a million dollars though. Yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah. That'd be a lot easier. Yeah. Uh, because I'm not worried about cost. Well, I mean, I'm still worried about cost benefit, like where I give it to. Um, but yeah, it'd be a lot easier. Interesting enough, right? So see, so I can imagine this interview one day. Like, so what did you do when you made your first million? Well, I went out and I bought a pair of headphones. It was yeah. like a hundred bucks, and that was pretty cool. Um, <laughs> it was pretty cool. I paid off once. Yeah, I paid off my car loan. That was that was cool. I guess you know now I have a car. Cool. Yeah. Uh, um, I don't know. Then I just like dumped I, it somewhere on the sidewalk and just watched people <laughs> grab it. That was entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I told my family that I didn't have to worry about money, and they said, good for you. And I said, I know. Like, <laughs> then they asked me to pay for dinner, and I was like, no, I'm not rich. Like, <laughs> like we can split. Like, I'll pay for me, you pay for you. Like, <laughs> I, I love how, I, like, I just, the problem is I'd probably say those things. <laughs> At the state I'm at right now, of course. Um, right, you know, but um, but that's in- so that's like examples, right, of comfort zone versus safety zone, right? Like, so it sounds like the safety zone is like a subset of the comfort zone. Um, the comfort so it depends on the person. Most people, the comfort zone's little, and the safety zone is much bigger. Yeah, right. So the comfort zone would be then be a subset of the safety zone. Right? No, no, no. Okay. Subset means smaller than sub. Right, exactly. So the safety zone is a subset of the comfort zone. No, because the comfort zone's smaller than the safety zone. Oh, it, that's okay. what I'm saying. I, my understanding, it sounds like the safety zone's much smaller than the comfort zone. It depends. Zone. I mean, and this is all theoretical. We're talking like, about circles. Like the, but the example that you gave, right. like, if you move the microphone, yeah, that's compromised your comfort zone, so, but not your safety zone. Exactly. So, we're so outside, your safety zone must be smaller. We're outside of comfort, we're, but we're still in the safety. So the safety zone must be bigger. Right? Do you get it? Am I not explaining myself well? I feel like I've dealt way too long on this topic now. <laughs> Whereas you just said something really No, this is just... super interesting. Really? I, oh. I mean, I appreciate it. Oh, good. I, um, thought, I thought we've talked about this before. That's why I was just kind of breezing through it. I thought... No, I, I've never... I don't think I've heard the term of a safety zone before. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh, oh You're I'll, right. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> I thought... I, I was like, I'm not like... You're the math. You're the mathematician. No, and that was like, I was trying to visualize it, but like, I just, I don't know why I was backwards, but I was backwards. But yeah, so that's what, I mean, just what you talking about, you, that's what reminded me uh, of that, of kind of, um, I don't even know, I mean, what what was connecting it anymore? I got so, I got so enthralled in like me spending a million dollars, I've forgotten about what we were even talking about. Do you have (laughs) a secret uncovered? Oh yeah, I do. Were we done with yours? I mean... It's a topic that I could talk more and more about. And actually, actually. Yeah, what I, else? Yeah, yeah I mean, let me, have, let me share a little bit more yeah, about it. Time. So this, this was a big part of it that I would like to just, yeah. Um, 
that's gonna be a show note like <laughs> it's a big part of that i just like to yeah um uh yeah. That, anyway it's gonna be great um <laughs> so this was kind of experientially what had happened this week that brought me to the realization that like i don't want things to be easier um, oh right that's what we we're talking about yeah yep. Yep. so i um i'm teaching martial arts i teach martial arts by the way mm-hmm. for listeners yep. um and i i my backstory in martial arts i started when i was 12 years old mm-hmm. um i started Bra- brazilian jiu-jitsu when i was 12 i started muay thai when i was 15 um when i was 16 i was a national jiu-jitsu champion for my age weight and belt um and then when i was 18 i was training for my first mma fight and I decided to do a kickboxing smoker event, which is like not quite a kickboxing fight okay. um, in preparation for my first MMA fight since I had trained, but I had never competed striking. Mm-hmm. Um, I only ever competed in grappling tournaments um, and training for the smoker that was meant to prepare me for the MMA fight. Right. I injured my sciatic nerve, um, which is and huh? Oh, your sciatic nerve. Yeah. Oh, I got it. Yeah. Yep. Um, and this happened the I, I still did the kickboxing fight which was the weekend before i started school at plu mm-hmm. um so going into my first year at plu starting like a heavy course load and simultaneously being injured kind of didn't keep up on my training you know? yeah um so now years go by and i start like my entrepreneurial endeavors and just the way that life happens and I'm not able to train consistently or even inconsistently, but like I don't ever forget about it. And mm-hmm. when I can, I stop in at different gyms and I say hi and I train for a day. Um, but I'm not really consistent. Um, and I have it on my list of life goals that I'm not, no matter where I get to in my life, if I'm not training, I'm not there yet. Like I'm not done. Yeah. Like that's, that's a big life goal I have. Um, so then I started like literally go into the gym one day, kind of the way that I do where I've just noticed that I have a, the time slot free. I'm like, Oh, I'm going to go to this dojo and I'm going to train. Mm-hmm. And then while I'm there, the, uh, the owner offered me a job. Um, and just, he's like, Hey, you want to teach my kids class? I was like, um, yeah, I nice. used to love teaching the kids classes. <laughs> so now I'm teaching the kids and I'm helping him and he's, He's their main instructor. He just needed support and in case he can't be there, um, things Mm -hmm. like that. So I'm helping him teach them. And there's all sorts of things that like you want, you want them to do properly that like you wouldn't do all the time, but you need to do it right when you need to do it right. Um, And so those are the kind of things that I would like model for the students. Okay. An example of that is, in jiu-jitsu, if you're on your back, you don't let your head touch the ground. Okay. And that's just a mobility issue. When your head's on the ground, you can't move in the way you need to to be aggressive. Um, so we're teaching these kids to keep their head off the mat when they're drilling and when they're training. And um, you would never ask a kid to keep their head off the mat like nonstop for like five minutes. Because yeah. if you try to do that, <laughs> the, it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Doing like holding your head off the ground for 30 seconds when you're on your back is painful. Mm-hmm. Um, but when I'm modeling what I want them to do, I'm modeling all the time. Yeah. So I like I, that. So one example, head off the mat. Um, I'm laying on my back so that the head instructor can teach a move. Mm-hmm. And as he's teaching it, he's sitting up and he's talking to the kids and he's getting their attention and he's making intricate points. My back and at one point, just thinking about this. Oh. <laughs> And at one point, I just notice, and like yeah. this, this literally happened this week. I just noticed, huh? I've been laying here holding my head off the ground for five minutes. Huh? Yeah, and like that's crazy painful. Yeah. Uh, at a, another point, we're having the kids do wall sits, oh. and we're we need them to do wall sits yep. for a set period of time, but we're not starting the clock until all of them are doing it right. So at the very beginning of that, I sat and I did a proper wall sit. Yep. And I didn't do this to model like I do most things. I did it because I was actually curious how hard of a task we were giving them. So I sat there and I wall sat 
perfectly until all of them did it and he started the timer then i did it with them no in both of those situations i was sitting there and on a conscious level i was like this is extremely painful but it's clear that i can do it physically because if i couldn't my legs would just give out right (laughs) right so my and i mean pain's there for a reason yeah most of the time pain is our body's way of telling us that we shouldn't be doing something. Mm-hmm. But when we know what's causing the pain and we know that it's something that's good for us, that's the situation when you just got to get your head out of the way. And like, I can physically do this and I just don't want to like yeah. on a mental level. We're, we're hardwired for pain avoidance, yep. but that doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. Right. It's, I mean, like, it's a four it, minute mile, right? Right. It's all mental. Yeah. It, it's, yeah. It's a mental like, I, overcoming for a physical <laughs> act. Right. And so that was the realization, like, the, the, the next day when I sent that text message to my girlfriend mm-hmm. about how overwhelmed I am, like, I started actually thinking about that. And it was like, why on earth would I think that that's a true statement for one aspect of life and not for others? Like, <laughs> it's not yeah. that I can't do it. It's that it's hard. And I'm hardwired for pain avoidance. Mm-hmm. I need to rewire my brain because that's not always beneficial. Right. Like, so let's lean into the hard thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, exactly. And the thing is that the more you do it, the more your brain actually rewires itself. Like that's exactly. So you're yeah. you're, you're, and I know, for I I, I mean I've I've, oh boy I've tr- I keep on I always try and for and then forget like to do those kinds of things of where I'm just like I'm just gonna tell my brain this consistently until it's true. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of like it's like that's why I don't make fun of people who say like manifest destiny you know like i'll just manifest it i'm like on a certain level yes that's true on another level it's completely out of your hands um like there's nothing you can do when it comes to like you know like they're like oh manifest this job or something i'm like yeah on a certain level if you believe that you'll get something then it'll be easier Um, it statistically increases your odds by a very large margin yeah um doesn't mean it will happen but it means that your odds are better because you're actually trying and you believe you can. It's all it's, and it's the same thing as confidence. It's confidence starts with mental. Um, right. The other thing there is like it. if you get your head right anyway with the mindset of like things are guaranteed like manifest destiny like this will happen. Mm-hmm. If you actually do that right and you get your head right in the first place, then if it doesn't happen, it's not a big deal either. And you're like, "All right, so that didn't happen. We keep pushing and we'll make it happen." Like right. <laughs> it exactly. just didn't happen yet. Or it just didn't yep. happen that way. Yeah. Like, exactly. And that's the idea of like, uh, I either win or I learn. That way I don't lose. I <laughs> literally, that was my podcast, my personal podcast. I just recorded that episode today. Like with nice. that. I wish I knew that phrase though. Because <laughs> I said it very clunkily. <laughs> Ooh, I, I feel like I've said that phrase to you though. You have. I just forget. Okay. I mean, I. I, I like that quote. <laughs> yeah. Either, yep. Um, either when I learned that way, I don't lose. Uh, yeah, you definitely said it to me. I just, I mean, my memory is shot. Yeah. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, that's something I'm trying to work on, but then I just forget about it. Ha ha ha. So funny. <laughs> um. <laughs> that's that's the hardest thing about growth in any real capacity is like relentless, consistent action, or persistent, consistent action. Right. The right. consistency is the hard part. Yeah. And yeah. that's the discipline, and that's the stuff I'm teaching myself again right now is to be truly disciplined yeah. in life. Well, that's why you need to analyze triggers um, mm. because everything that you do is triggered by something. If you want to play video games, it's triggered by something. If you want to eat unhealthy, it's triggered by something. Um, if you analyze the triggers, then you can either change the action associated with the triggers or you can create new triggers that override the old ones. Mm. You know, it's habit forming, one on one. Yeah. Uh, but it's kind of kind of like the same mentality behind like anchoring. Anchoring? Like, yeah. What, what um it? anchoring is basically a technique for like getting yourself in what you would perceive as an ideal mental state. Um I've never heard it, of this. Okay. It takes front loading, it takes building, but um so um Okay, this is actually an example that um, my co-founder uses. Oh, yeah? Um, He has a watch, not this watch, but he has a watch that he only wears when he's doing work for the business. Yeah. Okay, Um, yeah. Okay, I see, yeah. Before he puts it on, 
there's a mantra he tells himself about the kind of person that wears a watch like that. Hmm. Um, then he puts it on, does work. As soon as he's done working, he takes it off. But if it's on, he does, he's not done working. Interesting. And it's just a physical anchor yeah. of the mindset that he wants to have. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. similar to, because I know a lot of people use location. Like they'll go to a mm-hmm. certain coffee shop or a certain place yeah. to do certain kinds of work. Yeah. Um, I know when I want to... Well, the the big part about that is more the mindset that he's forcing himself to have. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. a, yeah exactly. That's associated. So you're associating, I guess, anchoring um, yeah. something with a mindset, and that's, in a way, forms yeah. a trigger The for other it. common one is, like, you can anchor yourself. And this is something that, like, Tony Robbins teaches. If you yeah. ever go to his actual, like, eight-day events, like, yeah. <laughs> his events are just long. That's all I'm saying. I don't think <laughs> great days. But, like, you can teach yourself to, like just touch yourself in a certain way and it will force an emotion on you. And it's just like uh, Pablo's yeah. dogs, like making a strong enough association yeah, exactly. that now when you do that, that's how you feel. Have love. Uh, that rings a bell. Uh, what? Um, <laughs> uh, it, it, it does a joke. Training the dogs to salivate. Yeah no, yeah, no, that was the joke. Oh, did we talk about him? No, no. Have we talked about him on the show? No, we haven't. I just, oh, Pavlov's <laughs> bell, you know. But, I, I got it. Yeah, okay. I've, I've wanted to use that joke for a long time and now it... Anyway, um, yeah. Well, I'm glad you got to use it. <laughs> kind of. Uh, <laughs> well, you got to use it. I just ignored it. I know you did. You didn't set <laughs> yeah. me up, bro. I held yeah. out my I held out my fist there, and you just. I should have. I should have done a dunch. Yeah, it, I'll add it in post. Uh, no, mm. I won't. <laughs> uh, no, you. Won't. But yeah, so okay. That's interesting. That's your secrets uncovered. Yeah, I mean, we are a half hour and 40 minutes into the show. We got through my secrets uncovered. Yeah. Well, okay, Go fine. <laughs> well, see, mine is actually, it's, it's a little bit more tied to philosophy, I guess. Um, so I guess we have an excuse for um, <laughs> sewing for so long. Um, okay, this is something I want you to guess, okay? An audience, play along, all right? I want you to guess where i heard this like what type of place or thing was like what like where would i have heard this okay okay this is the game because i don't think you'll be able to guess Mm. if you want something to stick ritualize it church (laughs) (laughs) funny enough no they're talking about church uh, about religion in general yeah huh this was uh, your psychologist no you shrink <laughs> <My> sh- <laughs> <laughs> no this was i listen. i heard this on the pete holmes podcast a pod- i don't know who that is pete holmes oh he's a comedian yeah. he's oh okay he's lovely he's goofy lanky he's he's a very very entertaining enjoyable human being um i really like him um he's not to many people's standards because he is very goofy but um, but on his podcast, he's like super goofy and outgoing, blah, blah, blah. Then he'll ask this really insightful. He's like, are you scared of death? He's like, what is life? Why, why does life have any meaning to you? Like, they don't just get into these really deep topics, um, which is why I really enjoy it. But um, he said this and I was like, wow, what do I want to stick and how can I ritualize it? Because I realized I was like, I have no ritual in my life. I have no processes things that I just do uh, on purpose uh, to better my life. And so I was really fascinated with the idea of ritual and why we, like why that works. Um, And I didn't, I wasn't able to come to a very solid conclusion other than that. It's a list of, it's like, it's like a trigger followed by a habit, 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 habit which produces the result, which is basically what religion, more specifically church, is. It's the trigger of, it's a certain day, the habit of you go to this place, you say these things, you listen, blah, 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 you do this, and then that has the outcome, right? The desired outcome. Um, Whatever you want that desired outcome to be. Um, Community, enrichment, whatever, you know, whatever it is. Um... But so I was really interested. I was like, okay, what what can I ritualize? And I couldn't I still haven't found a good way to ritualize day-to-day activities. Because part of me rejects that cuz I'm like, I don't I don't want to make up, yeah, you know, I don't want to in my mind, you know, I want to want to make up something and be like, oh, this is like the thing I do, I like rub my lucky, lucky rock and that makes me, you know, do this. Um 
even though like you know a lot of superstition is based on that you know um of that you i'll do send these... you a lucky rock <laughs> but the thing is so oh and then also and then and then i was reading the, in this book is like it was a fictional book but they're talking it described very well ritual before um, it was a, before a fight like a duel it was a sword duel right and like did you do this did you do this did you do this and he realized he didn't do one of these things and the way the author described the emotion of forgetting to do one of your rituals before something big, it, like it hit me so hard because I'm like, wow, that makes me it make it made me understand on an emotional level how important right these things are, even though mm. they're meaningless and made up. And so basically, so that's funny. Yeah, like I actually no legitimate reason to it and i've put a lot of thought into it over the last week but when i'm like putting on my uh gi for jujitsu mm-hmm. there's a very specific way that i tie my belt and it's not the knot because the knot is actually right. like a tradition yeah but like systematically how i go about it is routine and strict and to the point that if i ever had my own dojo i would teach my students that this is how you tie your belt <laughs> <laughs> But see, isn't it like that kind of thing fascinates me because I naturally kind of reject those kinds of things. So I'm like, it doesn't like it's not real for me. I'm like the way the way you tie things or the way I do things or even like the way um, I've I've done that. I've showered the same way ever since I was a kid. Same way. Every single time I put on my shoes, the left shoe first. Otherwise, I can't like my mind doesn't work. Um, if I put on the right shoe first, it feels weird and foreign to me, right? Um, but and it fascinates me because it's just made up; it's not real. But the thing is that it becomes real to your mind, and that's why I think that it flows in this podcast because then we're talking about reality again. Um, and I realize I'm like I need to shift my view of reality to incorporate this mm. and things like this that affect you affect your well-being your mind your outcome your your like what you produce what you do in the world it affects it visibly but it sh- but it's 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 just a thing that's not real it's a placebo Should... <laughs> yeah um i i feel like this this is slightly tangential but i think it might be beneficial for you i'm gonna give you some some words from jordan peterson <laughs> okay i didn't okay. realize you watched jordan peterson okay i mean like who doesn't like well, i mean i don't know i didn't i mean i don't know you know like come on um <laughs> he's an interesting guy I, I he's mean, very there's, interesting there's a lot of value to some of the stuff he says some some of the stuff he says seems very out there yeah. but then because he's so intelligent and so sharp on some things right i dig deeper into the things that seem out there yeah exactly and <laughs> yeah um but and anyway so uh he was talking on um like daily routines why? Um, and because he he's a psychologist, how, or it's like is he? Is he a psychologist, psychiatrist? Yes, he's a psycho- one yeah. or two. One or two. Just for yeah. anyone listening who doesn't, who's yeah. Um, he uh, he talked about how a lot of people, um, like it's a personality type, but there's a lot of people who don't want like a daily set routine, yeah, and they won't schedule their days, yeah, and there's a lot of people who the reasoning that they won't is because they feel like it's limiting creativity it's not allowing them to be Mm free-flowing it's not allowing them to do whatever they want um and so then their perspective is like routines and structure feels very limiting and controlling exactly that's why i'm talking (laughs) to you about it um so jordan peterson's like response to this was effectively you're thinking about it is just off base you like it you need a shift in perspective um it's not about what you have to do it's about if you could how would you build your ideal day yeah go build that and live it yeah and if you can shift the perspective to this is actually me choosing my ideal day Mm -hmm. then your routine becomes something that you're like excited about and looking forward to Uh, i do have a rebuttal though Okay, I, and I, was saying, I can't. 
I can't defend his argument. That's just Jordan Peterson on stage. That's not my I thoughts. I will say, so I've done this. I've built my ideal day multiple times. The problem is, me the next day hates the person that built that ideal day. It's like, no, you're not going to control me. <laughs> you're, you're not going to tell me what to do, my past okay. self. Okay, I have a story. Uh, I told you how I try to get up at 5 every morning, right? Uh, I, I told you I get up yeah, at 5 every yeah, morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, the, the honest statement is I try to get up at 5 every morning. Right. And this has, for weeks, been a struggle for me. Um, this week, I cracked it, and, like, I, w- I got up at 5. It's the weekend. I haven't got up at 5 the last two days, but yeah. on the weekdays, like, I was good. Yeah. And the very first morning that I, like, actually got myself out of bed at 5 o'clock, mm-hmm. the night prior, I had stuck a sticky note on my snooze button on my alarm that just said, don't you dare. <laughs> um <laughs> And in the morning, yeah. when I looked at it, I literally crumpled it up and threw it away. Yeah. And it was like, I don't care what you say. Right, exactly. <laughs> but, um, so, like, it was completely ineffective. Right. In a way that I th- hoped it would be. Or so it would look. Because then after I threw it away and I hit snooze and I lay back in bed, I started having this internal conversation where I was like, no, there's actually a reason I put that there. Like, um, I can go back to bed. But I'm trying to teach myself to be disciplined and to do the things that I say I'm going to do. And I said I'm getting out of bed at 5. Yeah. And then I actually got out of bed at yeah. 5. <laughs> uh, it's the same thing what we were just talking about. Let's prove it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We, oh, that wasn't on the show though, right? That wasn't on the show. No, we were just texting. Yeah. Um, but that was like, I, I, that's what my podcast episode was about that I recorded this morning. Mm. Um was basically around. So that. maybe this is just a plug for your show. It is. I mean, maybe we don't talk about it at all here. We just tell them cwcpodcast.com. Um, but uh, but it really was. No. Yeah. Don't don't talk about it all. Just make them go to your show. <laughs> well, Cross promote. Yeah. The idea was prove it. You can go yeah. learn about more about that. But uh, but yeah, that was that was the idea. Um, the funny thing is, my podcast has way more listeners than this one. So if anything, I should be driving podcast. I should be driving listeners to this one from that. Um, well, I would think so. I, I mean, I kind of assumed you already would be because <laughs> oh, I may have forgot it. Um, oh, <laughs> I'll put a little plug in. No, it's too late. I already scheduled it. Um, next one, I'll put a little plug in there. Or you could come on. Well, we need to talk about this afterwards. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. Um, not here. <laughs> yeah, not here. But yeah. So that that was kind of my my thing was delving into the psychology and of of root of rituals, not just routines, but rituals, which I think is a much stronger uh, word because they we mean don't the same break. Thing. <laughs> not. I mean, not. I mean, depending on the person, maybe. But to me, a ritual is something you cannot break. Like, you do not break. Like, it's almost like, if I may use the word sinful, to break a ritual, you know? Um, at least that's that's the way, like, I visualize it. Whereas a routine is something that you do because, you know, you want to make, be a better. Whereas ritual is something external that's basically you cannot break. So I just Googled the difference. Yeah. And, it, like, the very first thing that popped up, this one is not Cora. It's uh, Nest Labs. Um, okay. is basically what you just said. It's the the difference between routine and ritual is the attitude behind the action. Yeah. Uh, whereas uh, routines can be actions that need to be done, like making your bed or taking a shower. Mm-hmm. But rituals are viewed as more meaningful practices which have a real sense of purpose. Yeah. See? real se- Purpose. There we go. That's the word I was looking for. Rituals have, like, it brings purpose in your life. Like that's, mm. whereas routines are, do you do something because you want, per- I don't know. But yeah, so that was, that's, that was a very interesting to me, um, of all things on a comedian's podcast, um, <laughs> to talk about. And so that was very, yeah, that was really fascinating to me, uh, to hear that. Um, but I mean, we, I've kind of exhausted that and we're, oh my gosh, we're almost at an hour. Um, we've over, we've overthought, we have, we've over, yeah, we've overthought our, our <laughs> secrets uncovered. Um, <laughs> oh, you know what though? I'm actually curious. Just yeah. like any listeners out there, um, this discussion that we've had versus our traditional thought experience, oh, yeah. just leave some feedback. Like, did you think that was a fun episode this first 50 minutes or like? Is it, and after after it's done too, and we've gone through the Q and A, like I'd love some feedback on this kind of a show format. True, yeah, yeah. Overthinkingpodcastshow dot com. Because this is, I mean, no, uh, overthinkingpodcastshow at gmail dot com. Yeah, yeah. Because this is a, uh, 
This is our seventh episode, and yep. we've already tried out a few different show formats. We have, yeah. I, I would like some feedback on yeah. what's working what's, and what's, what's not resonating. What's your favorite episode so far, I should say? Yeah. And why? And what's your least favorite episode and why? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Um, I'm fe- <laughs> somehow, I don't know why, but I'm feeling like <laughs> the answer would be this one. Uh, maybe it just... Maybe for me, this recording. one's been really fun. No, see, like, I'm thinking from the listener, from people who listen because they want a philosophy discussion about existential crises and stuff like that. Um, I don't know. Maybe who yeah. knows? I mean, I listen many pod. I list my my favorite podcast of all time is um, it's called Hey Riddle Riddle. Shameless plug. And they do riddles, but they're all improvisers, and so they spend the first. They're the ones that spend the first thirty minutes of the hour long podcast. Just improvising and having fun, and they'll do two riddles at the end. Um, and I don't care because I'm like, it's funny. I'm laughing. So yeah. why would I care? Um, then, of course, then, <laughs> and then I'm, sometimes I'm like, okay, come on. I want to hear some riddles. That's why I'm listening to this. Um, but anyway, speaking of our audience, speaking of audiences, we actually have some questions. And these are, these are so real cool. questions from real people who I did not get permission to share their names. Um, so we're just going to... It's so cool. Seventh episode in, we already have a Q&A episode. We do. This show's going really it's well. It's going so like, good. Um, it, it really is. So, <laughs> I don't know. You should hear the questions first, maybe. Um, I mean, the fact that we have them yes. is saying a lot. It is. I mean, how long have you been running your other podcast? How many Q&A uh, oh, episodes no, we're not, we're not talking about this. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Good job, fan base. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, we're not. I'm not answering that question. Um, so the first question, um, which I mean, it was just interesting because it actually relates to one of the topics we wanted to discuss and which we've mm. alluded to in the past. Um, question is, it starts off with, why do we like sunsets? I was like, what? And I was like, well, then why are we attracted to beauty? And it was interesting to me because then I started thinking about the nature of beauty and what it is. And how it's subjective. Then I was like, wait a minute. I'm like, I can't think of a definition of beauty. And that's what got me thinking. That's why I like this. And of course, like the why are we attracted to this? Why do we like sunsets? It's something regular. Something that happens every single day. Um, without fail. We've Everybody has grown up seeing these every day. You know? Or maybe not every, you know, every day. Um, if you happen to miss this actual sunset. But why do we love it so much? Why is Instagram full of them? You know? And then, of course, related to beauty. And it's interesting to me because of... And when it comes to people and beauty, me and um, one of my best friends, um, we have very heated debates about um, about people's attractiveness levels. <laughs> For fun. Like, all, all in fun's name, we're not assigning worth to anybody. But um, are you talking about me? No, we're not talking about you. Um, no. We've never done that, have we? <laughs> not once. Okay, I thought not. <laughs> um, but like, we have like that is the thing that we debate the most is like whether someone's attractive or not, and we have completely opposite tastes. Um, and many people who like the majority of people would say is attractive, I would say no, I don't think so. Um, regardless of gender, um, it's. I'm like, no, that person to to me is much more attractive and beautiful and good looking than somebody who I'm trying to think of. I don't want to. I don't want to throw out examples. That that sounds mean. Uh, not in public. <laughs> I'll do it in private with a close friend, but not in public. <laughs> Am mm. I a hypocrite yet? I don't know. That should no, be, that a should... hypocrite is expecting something of others than you do of yourself. True. Okay. Fine. So, um, yeah. What did you just Google the definition of beauty? I heard a typing. Yeah, I did. Oh, yeah. You want to give it to us? It's sad that it was un, It was incredibly close to how I would have defined beauty without Googling it, which okay. is a bummer. But um, <laughs> so the, the dictionary definition is a combination of qualities such as shape, color, or form that pleases the aesthetic senses, especially the sight. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's general. Yeah. But the thing is that it doesn't define, and I think the thing for me, what where my mind goes when I'm talking about beauty, my mind goes to more of like a longing of what, like what do we as a person want that complements ourselves, 
whether it's a person, it's a thing. Like, I love art, okay? And I wanted to bring this. So the sunset for me was really, really interesting of an example. And I never would have thought about this. Sunsets do nothing for us. They do, like, purpose, like, you know, it's, it, it's, it's, it's mostly meaningless except for the signification of the end of a day, which we've all had thousands of experiences, you know, of that. Unless someone listening is under three. Is younger than three. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, if, Actually, technically under six, since that was a plural, but yeah. We both said You know three. what I mean, yeah. Um, yeah. So that's why it really interested me, because it's not like I long for the, something about the sunset completes to me. It doesn't, I'm not longing for anything about it. There's nothing about a sunset, especially sunset. I mean, sunrises too, but I think sunsets are really the ones that most people find Attractive? That sounds weird. Depends oh. on what coast you live Beautiful. on. Beautiful. Tr- um, true, but even when I lived in Texas, I didn't have any coast, and I found sunsets very beautiful, um, and the sunrise is, like, average. That has to do with the Maybe colors. Maybe just weren't up early enough. I saw, I, saw, I saw my fair share of sunrises there. Um, okay. I think it has to do, uh, part of it has to do with the colors, about the, the mindset of the end of the day versus the, the morning. Um, where you're at mentally. Um, where was I going with that? Oh, yeah, so the longing. So that's why, because when we talk about people, we say someone's attractive uh, or someone's beautiful, and usually that means they compliment you in some way. Their personality, their looks, like something about it compliments you. It's something that you long for in yourself, right? That's the way I'm, I usually see what someone calls something beautiful or something that you can relate to and understand. So that's where... Um, artwork comes in and i think i mentioned i mentioned this on a previous episode i think when we talk about art that um there's this one painting in particular when i went to the museum in london whatever it's called um and there's this one painting i stood at for 15 to 30 minutes and it wasn't well it was probably worsely drawn than most of the other paintings there and the amount of skill but for some reason the emotion that it spoke to me was un like unparalleled in the power versus every other painting there. Did you take it? Take it? The painting? The painting, yeah. <laughs> we don't talk about these things <laughs> in public. You're like I'll show let you me after. pause the recording, then I'll tell you and then <laughs> Yeah, we have like a little like a, a break, you know, uh in the video. Like a jump cut yes. uh to later. Yes. There's a suspicious thing rolled up in the in the background. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> we should do that for no good reason. <laughs> I, I wish I had something to roll up. I mean, I have a I have a mat in the background, um, but mm. I don't have anything to roll up. I would. Um, and then again, who's gonna actually get to an hour and fifteen minutes into the video? Um, so every single one of our listeners, of that's course, you and me. of course, um, yeah. Um, so that that paired with the sunset, and also paired with modern art because I love modern art. For me, it's raw emotion. You either get it or you don't. Um, there's no, there's very little skill involved. It's very, it's just, you know, it's pure emotion on canvas, which I love. So, I've talked for long enough. Devin, what do you think? I don't have anything to You don't have anything to discussion. add? <laughs> you emotionless. <laughs> um, I mean, I... Anything that I would add to, like, the notion of what is beauty would just be, like, the extremely strong correlation that we have between things that we consider to be attractive and things that are symmetrical. Like, um, and not just humans, but, like, biologically speaking, the more symmetrical a species is, the more probabilistic it is that they mate for life. Yeah. Um, and so when we find things to be attractive in any form, generally speaking, those things either are symmetrical in some way or they have a very strong asymmetry to them uh, so is... okay maybe okay let me bring it th- okay so <laughs> let's let's do a comparison okay mm. what what do you think is the cutest animal the cutest animal yeah um miniature pomeranian puppies okay now <laughs> They look like little snowballs. Yeah. When okay. I have a yeah. With yeah. Them. <laughs> that's okay. That's dark. Um, no, you want them to throw snowballs at you, right? 
No, I want to okay. throw them I'm at each other. To, I'm, trying, I'm trying to save you. Um, no, I'm <laughs> going to dig my heels in on this one. <laughs> going to die on this hill <laughs> having a snowball fight with puppies. <laughs> this is my stand. <laughs> Um, oh, this is where I hold them. Okay, so yeah, so this puppy, right, it's cute, it's adorable, it's pretty symmetrical, right? Everything that you just described is beauty, right? Then take a baby, one of those. Would you say that it's cuter? Well, I just said puppy, so I started oh, with Oh, you the started infant. with puppy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, darn it. <laughs> you ruined my logic. Uh, but yeah, so the thing is, so like the biggest contrast I have to that... Is that, you know, if you take, let's say, like, a, a baby animal, right? Usually, or anything littler, you know, we would describe as more, I don't know, beautiful, right? You know, cuter, more attractive. Like, it elicits more cute. emotion. Definitely cute. It elicits more emotion, <laughs> though, right? I could back that as right? well. Yeah. So, the difference isn't symmetry. The difference, you know, I, I don't know about pleasing attributes. Maybe. Wait, what did you say the first thing? Am I digging myself into a hole? I might be. Um, I, I pointed out that we have a very strong correlation between what we say is attractive and what is symmetrical. And, okay, maybe like, that's maybe that's the thing. Okay, I'm just I'm trying for maybe for me, and, and that's a thing. Hmm, I'm not expressing myself well as usual. So, like, this is a really good example, actually. Um. The painting behind you. Oh. The three canvas painting behind yeah. you. That's not symmetrical. No, it's not. But it is clearly asymmetrical. Exactly. It's right. asymmetrical and on purpose and makes it look Exactly. Good. You know? Exactly. So. My brother actually, I think my brother drew that. Mm. He painted that. That's cool. Yeah, it's his. <laughs> I, I just, he hasn't taken it from oh. me yet. Speaking of which, there's a there's a painting behind you and a white wall and a mirror and no fireplace and Oh, I completely we, we talked about this at the beginning and I for, completely forgot. Um yeah, I'm in a different spot um now. Sadly. No <laughs> yeah, fireplace. Yeah, you are. Rip rip fireplace twenty twenty to twenty January of twenty twenty to February of twenty twenty. <laughs> Uh, did you want to? Did you want to talk to that anymore? Or I mean, no? I moved. Right. Yeah, I'm back in Cali. Yeah. We're on the same Texas time zone. Texas, California. Yeah. yeah, which is way more convenient for us. Well, yeah, because it's the same time zone. Yeah, which is nice. makes this show easier. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So okay, yeah. So maybe, maybe I think you could say I overthought this one. Uh, <laughs> yes, you did. I didn't really. <laughs> I did, so, and I, I, the thing, the reason why I even accepted this because there was other questions which i did not accept i'm like no that doesn't make any sense um i'm like that that's not even like you can't i can't even talk about that like what um i want to know what those were give me your rejections at the end of the show okay okay fine i'll give you well that'll be our post show right what, yeah what we, okay what did we name it we named it something what was it afterthought afterthought yeah that'll be an mm. afterthought okay um okay Oh, it's, it's. I don't think they're supposed to be planned, though. But you know, whatever. It's your <laughs> show. Not. Do what you want. We do what we want. We do what we want. If you don't like it, you can leave. Okay, we have to I have to get that in at least one. Um, yeah, I want. I mainly want to bring that up because the idea of beauty is very interesting to me, um, hmm. in a psychological level, but also when I think it applies to philosophy because it attributes even even of emotion. I think it's a combination of psychology and philosophy because. What we find beautiful attributes to a lot to um, moral is that is it right to let's say like and the rainforest right or some or the coral reef something we find beautiful we would very strongly protest its destruction versus a really ugly species of frog that's endangered people at large would wouldn't care you know except for the people who understand the the species understand it's endangered and then maybe they would find a beauty in that right no it doesn't matter it's not cute well exactly <laughs> so that's what i'm saying so that's why i find it interesting because and that's what i was trying to get at i just completely forgot my words is that i feel that it actually gets involved in our moral decision making when we find something beautiful because something someone we're closer to like your girlfriend like we did in the trolley problem you find your girlfriend much more beautiful than you probably find me so you'd rather pull the trolley onto me rather than your girlfriend 
That's not the only reason. <laughs> I know. Hey, come on. Um, I, mean, that, I, know. That's, I know. That's a reason. I know. That's not the only reason. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. Um, right. So that's. By the way, yeah. for the hard, hard. Yes. Um, that decision, Luke, I would have you be hit by the drawing. I know. <laughs> I know. I, I don't think it. I'd even think. No. <laughs> you just you're, you have a, you have a cup of tea. You're pink. You just. <laughs> was that a scream? Eh, who cares? <laughs> be like, like the, my 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 thought would be, huh? I think my podcast just ended. <laughs> but then you get to continue post 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 humanly, post post the you know after I'm dead. Post mortem. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Post when I mean, someone's. Pr- oh no, never mind. I'm thinking of a word that's given post 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 the humility. You know what I mean. Anyway, no. <laughs> um, so this actually ties in a little bit. Um, I believe this is the same person. Um, I just have them written down in the notes. Uh, yeah, this is the same person. Um, and the question is um, a little bit related to this: um, Is significance inherent or is it cultural? Ooh. Right? Yes. <laughs> so the interesting thing about this one, why I chose it, is that it talks about significance. I'm like, wait a minute. What does that word mean? The same thing when it comes to beauty. I'm like, what do we ascribe that to? What do we perceive as significant? Um, and why does it matter? And I think that it matters what I the – re, the reason I think significance matters – is be more it, significance matters now more than ever because we have so much data is that we have to decide what i mean the news cycle let's say okay we have to decide or the news people have to decide what is significant enough to actually report on right what's actually worthy of people's attention of course <laughs> it'd be great if news worked like that and not you know what will get us the most listens and clicks and calls in like they're doing with the coronavirus right now. No, everything's a scare tactic. Yeah. I mean, like that's, that's the only thing news is. Yeah. And so the, the only reason that the news is all, always 99% bad news is because nothing else would hold our attention. Exactly. Exactly. Um, which really sucks. Um, right. It's also why I don't listen to the news. Well, it's, it's, me too. Yeah. I don't want that negativity in my life. Yep. Nope. I don't need that. It's like an X. Just yep. cut out away. I don't listen to you. Um, yep. Still go back sometimes, but you know, we're all human. <laughs> <laughs> that I was mean, so I, dark. I was so sad. <laughs> I didn't really. I didn't mean it for it to be that sad. Um, so I mean, I'm better than that. I never listen to the news. Of course, ever. of course. Um, I don't. I didn't know what the coronavirus was until it was in my county. <laughs> Okay, maybe that's okay. Maybe that's a little bit too much ignorance. But anyway, it probably is. Uh, but so and that okay. So that's why significance. So to you, Devin, yeah. Before you even answer the question of is it significance inherent or cultural, or maybe it's tied in. I'm really interested in your perspective of what is significance and how do we measure. Ah, but it. I just looked up the definition. <laughs> um. So. I think significance, if we relate it to a person who's, like, trying to have, like, personal significance, it almost always attaches to the idea of, like, doing something that's bigger than you, right? Okay. Like, like if I want to be significant, I want to have a life of significance, like, that usually follows, I need to do something that's more impactful than just me and my family, like, yeah. generally speaking. And even if it's not... Other people notice, like, your, notice your notice your touch. Exactly. Yeah. So there's something about like the notion of significance is like it needs to be bigger than than you. And if yeah. that if that's appealing to your culture, then that's great. And if it's appealing to something greater, I mean, the Egyptians built the pyramids so that they would be remembered. Yeah. Like they wanted to be known. They wanted that they were significant to be known forever. Yeah. Like, um, and so far they succeeded right. pretty well yeah. compared to most of the ancient world. Yeah. Like. <laughs> Um, which is we know awesome. we know a few of the pharaohs names and right. we we don't know names of entire civilizations exactly like, they did a good job or, um, or even you know gaps in all of history I and mean, be like we don't know what exactly. happened during this time period 
Right. Um, I'm, um, I, I might be making it. I've listened to like three episodes of Dan Carlin's Hardcore History, so <laughs> I know that's all I know. So you are an expert. I'm, at a, that. I'm totally an expert. I've read Unlike three. Unlike our intro claims, that's something that he is an expert. In. <laughs> I've read two headlines. I've read half of one Medium blog post. Um, let's see. I heard someone say something that someone else said that their cousin reportedly heard. I'm an expert. So, you, do you wanna do you wanna put in a pitch for your master class now? Twenty. My master class is five thousand hundred dollars. <laughs> um, it, it's, it's that high of a level. You have to figure out what that even means. Um, once you figure out how much that is, then you send me that money through a. I'll certain... tell you, it's not enough. <laughs> you don't understand how much that money is, then. Uh, it's on a... <laughs> but then you have to find the back door in the, our website. Send it through the PayPal there, which then routes back to your own account with a secret message hidden on that routing number. Then you have to decode that, and that tells you um, where to send money through uh, donkey mail over to Agent Egypt. And once I get the money, I'll send you back a letter apologizing that the course has been disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> Per- the perfect ending to that weird, <laughs> weird <laughs> bit. I have an idea for that, though. That's a, I'm, I'm really happy that that happened. I'll talk to you about it after the show. Oh, great. What are we getting involved in now? <laughs> um, but, but yeah, I mean, the thing is, so one the interesting thing about this, so I'm glad you brought up the Egyptians because they're fascinating to me. Um, but their, the significance of the pyramids for them was – Immense because it was partly religious. It was partly you know to be remembered, partly to honor you know honor their, their 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 pharaohs, their kings, right? Ancient alien theories say that it was signaling to Mars. Right, of course. <laughs> um, it was the epicenter for power and space flight um, in the ancient days. Yes, I know someone who actually believes that. Um, but uh, anyway, <laughs> them bang dad batteries just weren't cutting it. So. <laughs> <laughs> um so like on the, on one hand it was like immensely significant right it was like the epicenter right as far as i know for yeah. us it's like whoa that's cool they built that yeah. big thing uh, so i mean i'm i was getting into that and i'm uh i think significance is a really interesting thing to ask i mean nuke you and i personally have talked about this yeah. like asking me what i think significance is is really weird because i have such a small list of things that i think are significant yeah. um oh yeah we were, we were just talking about this yeah we had two separate conversations related to this yeah, yeah exactly so when i think about it like I, I do think that there's this like intrinsic nature to significance in that whatever is actually significant is deta- it's kind of like truth in that it's detached from our opinions of it. Mm-hmm. Like something can be very, very important to me personally, but that doesn't actually make it significant. It's just significant to me. Um, right. Like examples of that would be relationships, right? Like the most significant relationship that I have isn't actually significant in the standards of like the cosmos. Right. Like <laughs> Nobody um, else, most of people have no idea either that you exist and that this even exists, this this relationship exists. Exactly. Right. Right. Um, the like, ninety nine point nine nine percent of the people in my city have no idea that this relationship exactly. exists. Exactly. Let's not even talk about the rest of the world right. or the universe. And like. Right. Um. So I think, I actually think my answer to the question, is what I said at first, which is just yes, but yes in that both sides are. It's accurate. Like, significance is cultural and absolute. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think maybe, I think there's three levels to it to even break it down. It's inherent, you know, things that go beyond you as a person that affect other people. Mm. Most people would say, oh, wow, okay, that's greater than, that, than the average person that seems significant mm-hmm. to remember, to record, to notate, right? Um, it's something special. Then there's cultural significance, such as, let's say, like, um, Bollywood, right? We don't really find that – I mean, I I don't know about you. I don't find that significant because I have no idea 
what the movies are, what the actors are. And like, they're some of the most famous people in the world because of just the population of India. Um, they're, you know, they're people that we most like um, America, especially Americans, right? Uh, no idea who they are, but they're some of the most famous people in that country, right? Um, that every single person, you know, mobs and recognizes. Um, from what I've heard, because I have actually, I'm, I, I have um, learned a little bit about that culture. Um, See, that's funny because I've I've been to India and I know. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, well, I think you, yeah, you probably have more important things uh, when you were there to to do. I would hope. Yeah, <laughs> but um, but and so that's that's an example of cultural significance, right? Um, mm-hmm. And then individual significance, right? Would it be is something that you care about most? M- almost nobody else really does. If, if if it's nobody, it's very few, right? Such as your relationship. Mm-hmm. Sure, I care about it, but I mean, yeah. I so don't... I have a question then. Um, so if I wanted to extend it to the idea of like things that are objectively significant, yeah. Okay, like I have an example. And I just want to ask, like, would we say? W- we would say that the laws of physics are important. Yes. Would we say that they are significant? Ooh. That's a good question. I would... Oh. Okay, because I think this w- this matters the context that the word is used and the way this word is used. Because mm-hmm. if you're doing an experiment about gravity, physic- the laws of physics are very significant. You have to... like they're, They matter the utmost degree. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, to every person, like in a general, let's say general wise, I wouldn't say they're significant just because because hmm. it's not there's nothing out of the ordinary. I would say. Hmm. See, and that's interesting. The reason I actually asked that was just because the definition of significance has importance as a synonym and i'm not sure if i agree with that no yeah um well and and i think it it also matters the context that's why i'm saying oh actually okay i'm just i'm repeating things i've already said this morning when i was recording um (laughs) what was i um i was talking about how words are terrible um ways to transmit data um because it's the best we got yep which sucks (laughs) i but it's it's really one of the worst ways to transmit data because it's entirely subjective um, of the way the, of what words mean. Can I say? Okay. Yeah. Um, the, the issue with language is that it's a series of sounds that have agreed upon meanings. Kind of. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. We kind of agree on what things mean. Uh, right. When I say the word love, context changes it for sure. But even regardless of context, your internal understanding of what love means and your history is with probably it. fundamentally different than mine. Yeah. In a way that's unreconcilable. Yeah, that's actually well. It's actually <laughs> really interesting. I like the word unreconcilable unre- because it is. We'll, yeah, we can't, we can't convince each other. Right. Um, another one too is just that uh, when we try to explain what words mean, the only option we have to do it is with other words. Right. Exactly. Which actually means we inherently are committing the fallacy of circular reasoning. <laughs> And there's no other way to go about it. <laughs> the entire dictionary is a fallacy of circular reasoning. <laughs> it's a massive circle. Uh, that's And it's so big that we don't notice it. That's amazing. But it's true. It's like, mm-hmm. yeah, you're basically, it's an extension of using a word to describe that word. So saying important by, importance by saying, oh, it's something important. It's the same thing as using other words, just it has slightly different context that we agree that is that makes it different and we can understand mm-hmm. it. That's yeah, that's it's that's funny. Um, but yeah, so oh wait, so the gravity. I would, so I would say, regards like let's say the laws of physics, I would say something breaking the laws of physics would be significant. So right now, because of our current understanding. Like, the entire field of quantum mechanics is significant. Exactly. Because it breaks But physics. Newtonian physics isn't. Exactly. Okay. That's what that's I would say. That's what I would say because it is something that is... It's, I, would, I mean, out of the ordinary, I think, is the best way I've, I've, I'm, my mind can think of describing it. It's out of the ordinary, and it's, I would say it's of general... It, 
Hmm. But this is very interesting. Huh. I'm a little stumped to be honest. Huh. When it comes when it comes to when it comes to the word. And when it comes to the meaning, yeah. I would say not even just the word. I would say like the general meaning. So I, I love this. That like basically we've had two listener questions, and our answer to both has effectively been, eh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, we read a philosophy podcast. I mean, what did they, what did they expect? <laughs> I told you we need to answer the everything. We need to figure everything out. That's the point I know, of the we're show. We're on episode seven though. You want to do that episode one or four? I, whenever we had Dean on, yeah, four. That was that the was episode, right, but. At this point, that's just that's my mission for the show. We need to figure everything out. We, figure everything we out. cannot stop we the cannot show stop. Okay, until we're, we figure we're an hour and a half. Out. We've been running an hour and a half. We can't stop. <laughs> oh, I don't mean this episode. I mean the, oh, entire, the entire show. Okay. Show, yeah. Like we. This is my promise to the viewer. We will figure out everything. Yep. <laughs> Boy. Jeez. We're eventually gonna have to have like clones of ourselves made to continue. I this. said that with a straight face. Yeah, though. you did. Uh, but uh, yeah, so that's I I I I really like these questions. You know. Um, contemplating beauty is a fun thing for me. Um, Do you have another one? Do you have another? No, question? those are actually the only two. Oh, okay, I turned the rest of them away. Um, I should have uh. made that more clear. That this was the last one. Uh, but, but I can't, I'm just shocked that there's only two, but you turned a bunch away. That's interesting. I, well, I didn't turn a bunch away. I turned I think two away. Mm. Only one of them I remember. One of them was like a half formed, and the other one was actually a real question, which we'll get into in the afterthoughts. Um, but I mean, I think this is, I think we've successfully overthought. Yeah, I think, please. yeah, I feel good about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I've got stumped. I, I ran out of words to say, so I think that's a fair, um, a marker for when we, this is the first time this has happened in the four years I've known him. <laughs> <laughs> not true. Actually, Mostly it's not. true, but not completely <laughs> true. Um, let's see. The problem is that I don't run out of things to say. Because I can always just tangent onto something else and start something entirely new. Um, it's just my superpower. The problem is he does that most of the time when he's mid-thought, so no one knows what's going on. <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> like, okay, I will say, well, actually, well, let's, let's end the episode and we'll, we'll continue on from there. Um, okay. We've overthought this. Thank you for listening. Go uh, check out Devin speaking defense.com. Check out my, um, I don't know, podcast, cwcpodcast.com. Communicate with confidence. Um, and then from there, we'll see you next week. Careful, Luke. That sounded a lot like an outro. Oh, I almost sound like it. I know. I'm sorry. Yeah, that was close. Can I beg forgiveness? Yeah, we, we still don't have an we outro. We don't have an outro. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, but um, so the thing is, so the thing about rambling the hardest part for me about public speaking was answering questions, was doing a Q&A. That's by far the most difficult Why do you say thing. that in past tense? Are you not public speaking? No, I am. Sorry. When I started. I meant when I started. Okay. Um, and when I still do. I mean, I'm much, much better at it. Um, but especially if it's a question I don't I – I didn't anticipate or people haven't asked me before. Mm. I just start and my mind just goes and all of a sudden I lose control of my tongue and my mind drifts somewhere else and then I, I black out for like five minutes. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> what did I just say? Huh. I got to wrap this up. That's interesting. Can I? Yeah. The, do you know who Ravi Zacharias is? Ravi Zacharias? Ravi. Ravi. No. R-A-V-I. No. Okay. He's a Indian apologist. Um, he okay. is to apologetics by size and following what Billy Graham was to evangelism. Really? Yeah. Um, okay. I, I mean, he's not my favorite apologist by any means, but um, I have a friend who is a career apologist on Ravi Zacharias's team. Okay. Um, and so um, this was during a Q&A at one of his shows. It's, to me, the most powerful um, like authority statement I think I've ever heard an apologist say. Really? Okay. Um, and so someone asked, said a question, the best way that they could word it. And Ravi starts his response with, um, and he like addresses the guy by name and he's very polite, but he, he goes, he's, Ravi's extremely polite about this. Mm -hmm. I would say the same thing and sound arrogant, but he pulls it off in a way that doesn't <laughs> sound arrogant. But he's like, you know, um, we've been doing these events for 34 years and every time we do it, when we set it up, we get everything put together. We have a MC or somebody who's putting it on for us and helping us host it at their location. Every time we do it, I hand them a list. And I tell them, these are the questions that are going to be asked at the Q&A. 
Mm-hmm. To which they responded like, um, I didn't think we were planning questions. I thought you were letting the audience ask. And I tell them, no, we are. Those are the questions they're going to ask. Yeah. In 34 years of doing this, no one's ever asked a question that's not on that list. Yeah. Then he pauses for a second because he's literally like walking back on stage. And when he gets on stage, he's like, that question, it's on our list. <laughs> um, that's Well, I mean, it, I could, I mean, just speaking, you know, in the mental health speaking, every, I've, I think three that, times I, I've gotten a question I didn't anticipate. Yeah, but like that's, to me, that's such an insanely powerful trump card. Right. Especially when like. Because you know, he's an apologist, any questions during the Q&A are literally people like attacking his reasoning, right? Oh, yeah. Huh. And so he's like, yeah, like I've heard that. Actually, I've been responding to that exact question for 34 years. Yeah. <laughs> um. that's, that's interesting, which either means that he's answered it or he's given an answer and then he's stopped developing it. Or both. Or both. Yeah. No, I mean, like, it's I mean, either... if he answered it the first time, then why would he develop it? Anyway? Right. Well, exactly. What I'm saying is, like, either he has a good answer that answers it well, or he just can't, or he has something that satis- satisfies the way the question's asked. Well, and um, really, I, what I think that's saying is, like, I know enough about human nature and enough about what I'm presenting. Right. To where I know the questions that I've created in your mind. Yeah, exactly. And I'm prepared to answer them. Well, that's the other thing. Oh, that's actually a good thing when it comes to public speaking is I purposefully leave things out. If I have a Q&A, there's certain things that I'm like, oh, sweet, I can make more room in my speech and I can add this thing in because I know people will ask about this because I skipped over mm-hmm. it. And, and whenever – and usually when i plan that out, sometimes it happens accidentally um but when i plan it out almost always you know it happens i'm like yeah i missed that part and i knew you're interested in this but i saw the opportunity to cover this other thing that you would never think to ask me Mm -hmm. um so now boom there we go go um that is interesting but anyway oh boy um i don't have a lot of time but um i did want to say the question the first question i got uh, oh, are we? Is this? Are we on? Yeah, we're, the yeah, we, we have now? been. Okay, I didn't know that. Okay. <laughs> I, thought, I thought you. Yeah, I thought like it was. Very, oh, I thought I thought I made it clear. Welcome to Afterthoughts. Um, well, I, I knew that we ended the show. I didn't realize that that whole everything we said was actually going to be part of the afterthought. Yeah. Oh, uh, oops. I mean, it yeah. can be. I'm down. Yeah, I thought it was interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. but um, what? Oh, what was I going to say? Oh, the question. The first yeah. question. Actually got from... I just thought... I guess what I expected we would introduce the idea that we were doing a post-show. Oh. For the audience's purposes. Like... Well, speaking of mess-ups... Uh, I know that was my podcast today, darn it. I'm, I'm so... Con- I, whenever I record multiple things, I get so confused about what I said when and which huh. one. Um, I was talking about messing up in that one. I was talking about hmm. messing up in this one too, right? No? I don't think so. I mean, we our show goes so long, it is really hard to it remember hard. what it was said when. But anyway, I was talking about messing up. Um, no, we were talking about um, two sides of the same coin, right? We we're talking about um, no, that was our post. That was before we started recording. Was you were, you were saying that either I win or I or either I win oh, or yeah. I learn? Yeah, that didn't that didn't make that it into I, this I never show. Lose. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, that's why I was confused. Um, I think you got that recorded, then you stopped the recording. So we could still use that and frame it somehow. Maybe. Because I think you got that recorded on the first time you hit I play. I think so. Maybe. I'll see. I'll see yeah. you when I'm editing. Um, but uh, the first question we got, the reason why I didn't include no, it. No, no. You're doing it again. Welcome to the afterthought. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize. This is... Okay. You take. Okay. You do this. I'm, I'm confused. Well, <laughs> welcome to the afterthought. This is our post show where we talk about anything that we wanted to talk about that didn't make sense for the show. Okay, got it. Um, I just got invited to play baseball for the first time in four years. Uh, I thought we had a plan. <laughs> listen, I am chaotic neutral, okay? Okay. I. <laughs> That's a good definition. Okay. Of actually. <laughs> I'm chaotic neutral. <laughs> and I don't know about you. I think like you're evil good. Um, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Does that even work? No, it's... it's, it's, it's um, it's um no it's neutral wait, it's pat wait what's the you know we don't want to talk about i'm gonna look it look up it up but anyway i'll talk about the question it's very brief the reason i didn't include it is because it was more theology than philosophy um they asked um why is it why can you never cease existing and i was like what what does that mean 
and they're like because um if god made you then you can never cease to he can't unmake you and i was like oh. i was like oh that's theology not that's theology philo- not, not philosophy, philosophy. Yeah, and I thought I love that question, but I can see why you wouldn't want. It for yeah, exactly. Show. I was like, I was like, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Like, we can kind of discuss it, but not really. I, I mean, really, what we would be doing is I would be discussing the theology behind that statement, right? And then you would probably be sitting back and being like, "Well, I don't." But like, you're presupposing God, exactly, so like, exactly, <laughs> exactly. That's the thing. So it wouldn't, and I just don't think it. Would, I didn't think it would add value. And I was trying to. I was thinking. I was like, well, actually, could we actually talk about this in a philosophy way? Then I was thinking about like ideas. Like, oh, like when we can relate this to ideas. Then I'm like, no, I already have two questions. We're already gonna go long. I'm like, we don't need this. Um, so that's why I just didn't. I didn't. I was like, you know what? We don't need to add this. I probably could have told you this beforehand, and we could have talked about it um, instead of me just making the decision. But um, you know. But what, okay. I mean, I, I, I actually, as much as I want to talk about it, I, I support your decision in that, like, it's, like, the act, it makes sense. Like, I would want to talk about it, but not here. Yeah. Okay, so you yeah. would be lawful evil. Lawful or evil, Or lawful huh? neutral. No, no, I think, no. See, the issue that I'm having when I'm looking at the charts is I'm only finding examples and not definitions, and it's really bugging True. me. True. Um, I just I literally just want yeah. a definition. When I take the test, when I when I actually take the test, I get lawful neutral. Um and it's been I've been told I'm lawful neutral, but I feel like when I'm actually What is this? It's like, D&D alignment. It's for D&D. Okay. Yeah. So it, it start it got started with the D&D alignment. That's so funny because it seems so practically valuable for like almost a personality testing, right. but it's just D&D. it's just it's literally just creating a character in D and D. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, it's which is okay. which is funny, right? It got so mainstream. Um, but yeah, I think, I think I found one that's actually definitions. Oh yeah, yeah, but it's got like sixteen of them. Oh, oh, they added greedy and obsessive. Uh, uh, that's not right. No. Moving on. Yeah. So anyway, I think. Oh, look, and then, oh, oh, the thing I love, too, is putting characters um, in it. That also simplifies it, because I'm like, oh, I understand these characters. I understand how they... Oh, I found one. I can figure out what I am. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, what? You said you're... I said I found one. I can figure out what I okay. am. So you said you're chaotic neutral, which is act for yourself without regard for laws or morals, but don't go out of your way to hurt others. See, the thing is, only on this podcast I do that, because it's, it's a place where I'm not going to... I mean, I'm not worried about hurting anyone. Um in real life, I definitely would be more. Uh, you said lawful. you think I'm lawful evil. No, I don't actually. I don't. That's what you. Okay. So I don't Luke, actually. Duke thinks that I'm a. Opp- I oppress others with establishments because <laughs> order is above morality and is necessary for your continued dominance. <laughs> I don't actually think that. I was joking around, um, because people. I think if, if, if. Um, People, if anyone didn't know you, and I just said, "Yeah, you're lawful neutral," people go, "Oh, that's interesting," <laughs> and just leave it. Um, lawful neutral. No. Now Luke says that I. Oh, sorry, not lawful, lawful good. Sorry, I meant lawful good. Um, that's what I originally okay. said. Now Luke's saying that I enforce the rules in order to follow your my moral code. Lawful good. Yeah. No. Um. So, I I don't know. I think you might be. I think you all. I don't know. I think we might be the same though. Is is lawful neutral? I. Mm. What's the definition? I, um, or chaotic what? good. I would say. I would say I'm more chaotic good. Maybe. Act according to your moral code, despite disregarding the rules. As a yes, yeah, see, that's that would be where I would yeah. align. Yeah. 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 Like I don't care what the law says. Exactly. I want to do what's right. Exactly. Yeah. I'll say chaotic good is a good. I I like that's a good uh, place to be. I I think the worst place on this chart, honestly, is probably true neutral. Yeah, if you don't stand for nothing, Burr, what do you fall for? There's a song for that. It's Hamilton. I mean, not the way you just said it. Yeah, if you stand for nothing, Burr, what do you fall for? That's Hamilton. Mm. I mean, they're what the. There's a way more mainstream version of that. If you stand for nothing, you'll fall to anything. I don't know. Hamilton's pretty mainstream. Like, 
There's not a whole lot more mainstream than Hamilton. At least two years ago. <laughs> I'm talking, what are we, in 2018? Oh, here we go. Here's a great one. Um, what is this? If you don't stand for anything, you fall for everything. Oh, if you don't stand for something, you fall for anything. Yeah, that's. I mean, I've heard. Um, yeah, I've heard that too. Um, that's. Uh, oh, this is so funny. Um, the po- the quote that I just found, the very first link I found for it, yeah, starts out by saying, "Who is this by?" Alexander Hamilton, question mark, Gordon A. Eddy, question mark, Irene Dune, question mark, Peter Marshall, question mark, Theodore DeVries, question mark. These are all the people who have been accredited with the quote. That's hilarious, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's an all, I'm pretty sure it's one of those quotes that everyone just says, and people so right. associate with different people. Well, right, but it's like the uh, effective equivalent of, like, if you don't know who said it, then it was either Einstein or Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But they're just calling it out. They're yep. like, or I Steve just Jobs. That was a funny way to do it. Mm. Yep, he's a, he's a, he's also one. Or Harris, not Harrison Ford. Um, Ford, Henry Ford. Is it Henry Ford? Henry Ford. Yeah, Henry yeah. Ford. Yeah. Um, to be fair though, the the two that I named statistically are the two most misquoted people on the internet. Oh, really? They are. Okay. Yeah. I. You know yeah. what? I will. I'll say one of my favorite quotes of all time comes from Ford. And if it's. Are you sure? <laughs> pretty sure. No, I'm actually sure because he said. If people asked me what they wanted, they would have asked for faster horses. Oh yeah, that is him. Yeah. If I if I sorry, um, if I asked people what they wanted, they would have said faster horses. And I yeah. love that so much. It makes me feel good about myself. It makes me feel powerful and control. Like a, just a strong, independent man making his way through the world. Um, well, and it's like there's a really cool thing that happened there. If you, I asked them what they wanted. They said faster horses, and then there you can. Do you want a faster horse or do you want to get where you're going Fast. faster? Yep. Exactly. And it's like yep. hearing the answer and then figuring out the actual true reason behind mm-hmm. the answer and then answering that problem. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, what, well, no, no. What do you actually want? There right. we go. You want the result. Don't focus on like the right. method. You want the result, not the method. And that's yeah. what like cla- it's classic marketing, right? Is you sell the and result. And that sounds so simplistic, but in real life, in practical senses, the ability to have the insight to recognize that, yeah, that's what made him great. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. I love it. Um, yeah, so I think, I mean, let's see. I mean, we've gone almost two hours. I really need to go to the bathroom. I need to eat. What's the other question? That was it. I couldn't remember the other. Oh, okay. I couldn't remember the other okay. question. Um, All right. Man. It was something. It was also something. Should we have an official outro for our afterthought? <laughs> <laughs> that would be hilarious. <laughs> Thank you. Just when we have it, so, it's professional outro. You've been listening to Afterthoughts. This is the production of Devin Tracy and Luke Maxwell. You can find us on overthinkingpodcast.com. This is episode two. Um, you can go to um, overthinkingpodcast.com, scroll down midway, and you'll find episode two right there where you can easily find it. If not, you can always go to overthinkingpodcast.com slash podcast and find all of our episodes right there, right for you. Um, if you ever want to contact us, overthinkingpodcastshow.com, and we will be so happy to see you in the next production by Devin Tracy and Luke Maxwell of Afterthoughts. That was the worst outro I have ever heard. Thank you, Luke. <laughs>